Welcome to the End Time Show. Vince Stegall here with Doug Norvell. We're taking your calls today. The number to join us is 877-END-TIME, 877-363-8463. Could Trump be the Antichrist? Doug, I know this is your favorite question, and I've <laughs> really fought you on asking it. So mm -hmm. uh, what do we need to know about President Donald Trump? Well, you know, the thing is, Vince, I mean, I don't know if you could tell on the intro or not, but it, it does it does get old after a while to keep having to, to answer these questions. But people keep suggesting and keep wanting to know, and they keep sending us more and more things. Now, I do got to say some of the stories that we're going to talk about today are a little odd, and we'll talk about it. Um, but I still do not believe, nor does in time, believe that President Trump could or will become the Antichrist. Um, there's several reasons why. There's scripture to back it up. We'll look at some of those scriptures today, but there, there is an interesting story that happened actually all the way back in February, and we didn't hear anything about it until uh, just recently. And so um, we'll definitely talk about it, but just right off the bat, let me just say, we do not believe that, okay? So I know that there's probably people already going, oh, yes, he is, because I see it in the chat, and I see people yesterday that were putting it in there right at the end of the program where, you know, they wanted to get their two cents in right before we went off the air. So they were able to do that. And then I received these uh, emails about it. So we're going to talk about it because it's something people want to talk about. Well, and, you know, with this new development, Doug, they're not just asking that, but oddly enough, they're asking whether he's not the Messiah, which we would never suggest, but calling him things like the Prince of Peace, mm -hmm. or at least suggesting it, is quite odd. Yeah, that is odd. Um, so this keeps coming up. Of course, like you said, we don't believe he's the Antichrist. Mm -mm. So we're going to look at today some, yeah. of this, some of these stories that are going on, and um, also look at characteristics of the Antichrist. I know that many people still have a lot of questions about who the Antichrist could be, right. the system that he will represent. And so we're going to do a deep dive and yep. see I how mean, things It's go. that time to do that. You know, Vince, we're getting down to the point to where so many things are happening. We've got the red heifers in Israel. We've got this war that's going on in Israel. we got talk of the temple uh, being rebuilt, third temple. So it, we're at that time more than we ever have been before. You know, and ever since 1948, when Israel became a nation, um, and, and God really fulfilled the prophecy of Ezekiel 37, the dry bones prophecy, um, we've been moving quickly toward the end time and quickly toward all of these prophecies becoming uh, more and more clear to us. And so this is just one of those, I, I guess because of the sign of the times that we're in, we do need to talk about it. So, um, yeah, we'll discuss it. Well, you know, and back to the Prince of Peace Messiah thing, some will say, didn't you see him at Chick-fil-A today? That's the Lord's chicken, and he was there. <laughs> he was in Atlanta, Georgia. He was at Chick-fil-A. And he bought today. everybody in the place milkshakes and chicken. Man, that sounds really good. But, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, even uh, oddly enough, Doug, this Israel heritage thing is just mind-boggling. Is that where we're starting for today? Going yeah, right so uh, I wanted to remind everybody that he's received a, an award before from this same organization. This is the... Israel Heritage Foundation Award. And last year in July, we even covered this when we talked about it because remember back then he received uh, the Israeli Heritage Foundation Crown of Jerusalem, okay? And they they awarded him this, and uh, we may have a picture. I don't know if we have that picture they can pull up. There's the picture of the crown that he received back then, okay? And this is what they said. I just got a little bit of that article from last year. He said, we, are all, we all have great gratitude for this person, Rabbi David Katz, executive director of the Israeli Heritage Foundation, said from the podium gesturing toward former U.S. President Donald Trump at his right. This is the person that doesn't care only uh, for himself, but he cares for the entire world, Katz says, especially for the people in Israel and for the Jews in America. The rabbi extended the blessing from Israel and wishes for a long, healthy, sweet life for the president and his family and all his friends. Some 150 Orthodox Jews looked on Trump at the Trump National Golf Club uh, bed minister in New Jersey only um, on, I'm sorry, July 10th, 
as the Israeli Heritage Foundation awarded the former president the um, Crown of Jerusalem Award. And there's that picture, you can see it right there. It's very pretty. It's a silver Torah crown, and it contained, it was contained in a glass box, and an inscription quoted Psalm 136.1 and noted that Trump, uh, Trump's extraordinary and heroic efforts to help the state of Israel and the Jewish people. And um, that, that uh, psalm actually reads, O oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endureth forever. So that's what was inscribed on the uh, plaque there for that crown. So the heritage, the Israel Heritage Foundation, let me just tell you who they are a little bit. This is from their web page. Uh, which is IsraeliHeritageFoundation.org, if you want to go look it up for yourself and check their webpage out. The Israeli Heritage Foundation wishes to keep the hopes and dreams of those Holocaust survivors alive. Their main objectives are to support sovereignty throughout Israel, including Judea and Samaria, and strengthen Israel's security, encourage worldwide aliyah, combat bigotry and anti-Semitism by showing Israel authentically and establish genuine peace through Israel's good deeds and innovation. Now, Vince, it's really the Jewish innovations that have made the peace accords come together. Mm -hmm. I mean, because the Jews have technology that is beyond what a lot of the uh, Islamic countries out there have, and that's one of the things that uh, you know, they have to offer is the technology, the things that they've been able to do. They've taken seawater and they can uh, take seawater and turn it into pure drinking water. They have a facility right there by the Mediterranean Sea. We've seen it when we've gone on tour to Israel. We've seen the big factory and all that. Well, now they've even figured out a way to take wastewater and purify wastewater on the apartment complexes and things like that. They have big cisterns up there that not only take in rainwater, but they can also recycle uh, sewage water and make it to where it can be reused. I mean, they, they, that's how uh, advanced they are than some of the, the places around them. And they, they can bring that to these other nations who are more like a third world type nation. And that's part of what the appeal was to the Peace for Prosperity Plan, which is what turned into the Abraham Accord. So there, there is a lot that the Jewish people have to offer, and that's what's kind of what they're what they celebrate here. And of course, Aliyah is something that we help with too. Um, you know, I'll let you tell a little bit about that because you know more about the foundation and and what we do for Aliyah for the Jews seeking Aliyah. Some people may not even know what we're talking about. Well, you know, that's a weird word that we don't really use in the English language. Uh, yeah. You know, it's it's where Jews return to their homeland of Israel. So there are organizations that their whole mission is to help Jews return to Israel, uh, get acclimated to the country. You know, if you're coming from America or um, anywhere else really and you go try to live in Israel, it's a lot different than, than where you're at now. I mean, right. uh, when Irvin passed away and when I had to deal with documentation stuff for end time with our college there, mm -hmm. to get an appointment with the bank and then you go there and you you didn't check a certain box. Well, now you're done, yeah. and you got to reschedule for two weeks. From like living in Israel is a whole lot different than what <laughs> right. I would be used to. Maybe maybe it's not that different in another country. But there's organizations um, that their whole purpose is to help Jews get acclimated into the nation of Israel. Mm -hmm. We have teamed up with um, the Jewish Agency uh, for many years now, where we have raised funds to help with that. So yeah. when the Russia-Ukraine war started, we were able to fill an entire plane from giving from our audience. Um, we were able to fill an entire plane of Jews that went and lived in these buildings yeah. that are connected to the Jewish agency. They have education for them for months. They help them get acclimated into the country. So yeah. uh, that's what Aliyah is about. And of course, then they contribute to that society. And so we feel like we're confident that there's a revival coming to Israel. Mm -hmm. There's a revival coming to the world. And uh, specifically, we can read about some of that in Israel. And we're positioned there to help disciple people and uh, Jews specifically. But you know what? There's, uh, we're connected to, I think it's 16 churches in Israel. Mm -hmm. uh, some are primarily Filipinos. Some are primarily Spanish. Right. Um, 
some are um, Arabs. So yeah. we're not saying we will only go there and minister to and help disciple Jewish people. Right. However, of course, that is you know an, a great emphasis in the scriptures, and so yeah. that's part of our burden. As we see what's coming, Matthew twenty four talks about those which live in Judea need to flee. Uh, Jesus is telling them, if you are out sipping on some sweet tea, working in the, you know, maybe for you, drinking some Topo Chico yeah. out on your riding lawnmower on a hot day, yeah. don't go in to get your stuff. You need to get out of town. Right. Well, that's what the Bible says is going to happen, and that's going to happen very soon. Mm-hmm. Um, we'll have to dissect the red heifer and what's happening in that regard to see um, exactly what's coming there like we've been doing. But... Uh, that is why we launched Warn the Jews, another Jewish Holocaust. You can go to warnthejews.com, learn more about uh, our efforts there. I've got this sticker on my computer. You can see that. That's available there. Of course, there's several other things there uh, that you can learn more about. Uh, Warn the Jews and how you can get engaged. Yes, we need your financial support to be able to make this happen, but we need your prayers more than anything else. We need you to get involved however you can. Start by you know taking Jerusalem Prophecy College. Get educated. Uh, learn how you can contribute as we establish God's kingdom here on this earth in you know in, in working with him to do that and then of course uh, man I can't wait for the day when he returns and we're all with him and his kingdom is fully established here on earth and that's when that real great reset happens and uh, we rule and reign with him and I man I dug I am so ready for that me too I wonder if first cup coffee will be over there on that side <laughs> You think you think they'll have a location right there in Jerusalem that we'll be able to tap into? It'd be nice if they did. You never know. I you mean, never they're know. they're making their way, so uh, it tastes like heaven. I can it tell does. you that much. It's I've got some good. right here. Uh, you need to get some as well. First Cup Coffee. They're a patriot-owned coffee company based right out of the great state of Texas. They do all the roasting there. Uh, in Pearland specifically, uh, right outside of Houston. I was just able to visit them this last week. It was a wonderful time, and um, you need to go get you some First Cup. They've got 11 different roasts, each one named after a specific piece of American history. Go to uh, firstcup.com. Use code ENDTIME to get 10% off. If you subscribe, they'll give you another 10% off. So go to firstcup.com. Use code ENDTIME to get 10% off today. You know, um, it, one thing about First Cup that I just want to say, uh, there's not too many of the roasts that I've tried that I don't like. I mean, there there may be one that just didn't set as well as some of these other ones, but we're drinking a brand new blend today that we've Guy. The Buzz and, Armstrong. Yeah, and it's really good. I really like that one. So now I've got like four or five of them now that I, when I order for myself, it's going to be hard to decide which one I want to order for. I may have to order more than one bag and try different things. But anyway, it's it's really good. I had Bible study in my home on Monday night when I got home uh, in terrible thunderstorms. And it was cold in the house because I forgot to turn the, the air back up. So it was 68 degrees when we got home. And... Uh, so we made a pot of coffee, and everybody enjoyed first cup of coffee that night. So it's pretty good. So anyway, get some, have a Bible study, share first cup. All right, sorry, that was a little bit more of commercial than you wanted probably, but um, we'll move on now. All so, good with me, Doug. So the Israeli foundation that, yes. um, that awarded Donald Trump this crown last February, they have now gone and done it again, but this time they've given him the uh, menorah of peace and and so that's what everybody's kind of up in arms about right now Vince that's what people are sending me and saying okay well how are we supposed to look at this and discern from this because um, this is this is what it says let let me just read you a little bit of this and then we're going to look at a couple of photos that we have from that organization so it says that former U.S. President Donald Trump on Monday received, now this would have been in February, this is February 6th, uh, received an award from the Israeli Heritage Foundation in appreciation for his efforts to forge no, uh, normalization agreements between Jewish state and four Arab nations under the guise of the Abraham Accord. Now remember, folks, he did this uh, in the normalization they're talking about is, is just basically being able to treat Israel as a, a normal peace partner, that somebody that they would do business with and things like that. And in return for this, they were going to get all kinds of things. So this is what President Trump had worked on with the Abraham Accords. Now, the award of the menorah, which I know we have a picture. We can go ahead and maybe get that picture up there. You see that it was presented to the president at Mar-a-Lago by the uh, 
Israeli Heritage Foundation Executive Director Rabbi David Katz and Executive Vice President Joseph Frager um, and some other folks there. But this menorah, which represents the eternal light of the world, is presented to Donald Trump Jr. in honor and celebration of doing what no other man has ever done. That is to make peace between Israel, the United Arab Emirates, uh, Bahrain, Morocco, Sudan, and an extraordinary Abraham Accord reads the plaque on the menorah's base. Now, one of the things that's got folks upset, if you look at your screen right now, and for those of you that are listening and not being able to look, you can see that it, it talks about this being what I just read, the part I just read, but then there's Bible scriptures that go with this. The scripture says in Numbers 25, 12, therefore says, uh, Behold, I give him my covenant of peace. So that's Numbers 25, 12. And then it says there further in Isaiah 9, 1. Now, actually, in our Bible, that's Isaiah 9, 6 is what they have on this plaque. But this is what it reads in Isaiah 9, 6. And this is what got people really upset about this. And, and it has people kind of shaking their heads. It says, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. So that's what that scripture reads. And so with that, that's got people asking, why would they give him this? And, and this is what this is talking about. Well, for one thing, we know that this scripture is talking about Jesus Christ, okay? So we as Christians, we actually, in our Bible studies here at End Time, we use this all the time uh, because this is a promise fulfilled when Jesus was born. Unto us a child is born. That child is talking about Jesus Christ. A son is given, the government shall be on his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. This is all talking about Jesus Christ um, who was God manifest in the flesh. So that's what we know this is talking about. So people are asking, why would um, Israel give President Trump this award that has this scripture on there? Are they trying to say that he is the Prince of Peace, which would make him the Messiah? Which are they looking at Trump like he's the Messiah? Okay, so those are questions that I cannot answer for you. I don't believe that to be true. Personally, that's my own opinion is I don't think that that's why they put that scripture there. I think that they were saying that God is sending peace to Israel and they don't understand that that's already been fulfilled through Jesus Christ. But like I said, I can't speak for uh, the Heritage Foundation. Perhaps one day we can have them on the show, Vince, and ask them about that specifically and just see what they have to say. Uh, but we didn't have time to do that today, so we didn't do it. <laughs> well, we need to because when, when you showed that to me, I went, I mean, I don't know what else they could be saying. Mm -hmm. They sure, and I, and I even said this to you, yeah. they surely don't believe that Trump is the Messiah. Right. And you just stared at me like, well, and I think you said, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. And don't call me Shirley. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I'm just, I didn't know. We don't know. But here's the thing. There, there's no way, Doug. There's right. absolutely no way. The, the thing is, I don't think that there's a way either. I don't think that they would believe that. But what I do think that they are doing is they look at Trump as a person who's done what nobody else has been able to do. Yeah. Okay. Which is true because Trump's accomplishments, I, I listed them here, which were in the agencies accomplishments for Trump. This comes from their website. It says, in addition to the Abraham Accords, Trump's achievements on Israel include also moving the U.S. Embassy from Tel Aviv to the country's capital. Now, that's why he got the crown last year. That's why they gave it to him, because he moved the embassy there. But he also recognized Israel's sovereignty over the Golan Heights and recognizing Israel's sovereignty over the communities in Judea and Samaria. So, these are accomplishments that he's made just for Israel that other um, presidents before President Trump had promised that'd be the first thing they do when they come in there is they would move the embassy to Jerusalem. Well, then they would get in office and they would think, well, this could cause a war to happen. Well, Trump went at it a different way and he looked at it as, well, if we take Jerusalem off the table, 
and just say, nope, it's Israel's eternal capital and give it to Israel, then that's, that's not even in the works to get these other groups in there, right? So the, other, other, the only other group that wants to claim Jerusalem as their capital is the Palestinian people, Vince. And so that's whenever we say that for Daniel 9.27 to be fulfilled and for the peace agreement to be the peace agreement we're looking for, we always say it has to include an Israeli-Palestinian agreement. And we believe that it will be a two-state solution because of Matthew 24, 15 through 21, that there's going to be a two-state solution there, that uh, in Samaria and Judea is where the Palestinian state will be. But they want that capital with Israel uh, in Jerusalem. They want Israel to have half of that, and they have the other half of that. Well, Israel has always said, we can't give up Jerusalem. That is our capital. It's where the city of David is right there in the heart of everything. And so they say, we, we cannot do that. Now, there are Palestinians who live within um, the Israeli occupied areas. I shouldn't say occupied because it's the Israeli areas. Well, that's they what call it the occupied. Yeah. Uh, but it's, they live under Israeli government and Israeli rule, and they all get along fine together. Every time we've been there, I have not seen one problem. Um, the, the shop owners that live there uh, in the areas that um, are under the Israeli government, those shop owners are some of the nicest people you'd ever want to meet, and, and they're Islamic uh, Muslim people. And so anyway, I'm just, I say all this to say that's the one thing that that peace accord did not have, and that's one of the pieces of the puzzle we're looking for, okay? So that hasn't happened yet. So right out of the gate, yeah, we said he's not the Antichrist. Yeah, and now we're going through this story. Has your opinion changed at all? Not could at all. The, could no. he be the Messiah, as some are suggesting? No, <laughs> we're not suggesting that. I know. No, we, not we at posed all. the question: uh, Could the rapture happen this Monday? Because people are saying about the eclipse. Yeah, and we get all sorts of people saying, you guys said it was going to happen on Monday. No. Well, I don't know how long they've been following us, but we pretty clearly have stated, one, we're never going to go, it's going to happen on this day. Right. We're, there's going to be some events happen that allow us to see, uh, get, get a little better idea on it. But in this regard, we are not saying Trump is the Messiah. Right. We are certainly not saying he's the Antichrist either. But people are posing that question, so we want to look at it. And then, you know, we have endtime.com slash Antichrist where we list all the biblical characteristics yeah. of the Antichrist. If you want to see every prophecy about what the Antichrist will be like, go to endtime.com slash Antichrist. You'll see it all there. I think after reading that, you'll be convinced as well. It's certainly not Donald Trump. So right. where do we go from here, Doug? Well, you know, you said something there. You said, is he the Messiah? Well, here's what we know for sure about that. Jesus said that many messiahs would come, many false messiahs would come. Uh, and they would claim to come in Jesus' name themselves. Uh, but Jesus said, if they tell you he's out in the desert, don't go out there to look. If they tell you he's in this upper room, don't go in this room. He's not there because, he says, as lightning that is, comes from the east is seen into the west, then therefore the sign of the Son of uh, Man shall come as well. And he also says uh, that that's where we need to look for him to come is in the sky. He's not coming as a as a man again. He's not coming back to the earth until he comes back to the battle of Armageddon and his feet touch the ground. But he's coming back as um, God in heaven. You're going to see him come. It says the same Jesus that left you and disappeared in those clouds, the apostles were told he will come back in the same way. They were standing on the Mount of Olives the day that Jesus ascended up and the clouds hid him from their sight. Well, those angels said that's the same way he's coming back. Jesus said the same thing in Matthew 24, to look in the sky because that's where he's coming. And so uh, he's not going to be a man. So we know if anybody ever claims they're the Messiah, if you follow this program, you better know because there's one coming in particular that's going to stand in that temple and he's going to declare that he is God and he is to be worshipped as God. That's going to be your antichrist so whoever does that is going to be the man but jesus said look for me in the clouds i'm not coming back on the ground like that so yeah, he's, not, he's not going to be a businessman he's not going to be right. a real estate mogul a tv host mm -mm. uh even a u.s politician doug mm -mm. that's not how jesus is coming back right. when he comes preacher. back <laughs> he, nope he's gonna he's going to destroy 
all the governments that exist here on this earth and establish his kingdom. Yeah, absolutely. So, no, it's not Donald Trump. Right. Not even close. Yeah, and so I, I guess I know that we're getting close to a break, but I guess when we come back from this break, um, not only can we jump on some calls and start taking some calls because we're getting people calling in, but we can look at some of those scriptures that show us the identity a little closer of what the Antichrist might look like. We're still not going to know who he is, but we're going to get some characteristics of the Antichrist. When will we know who he is? We'll know halfway into that final seven-year period. So, so Vince, we know that you know Daniel 9.27 tells us there's a final seven-year period that the, the he shall uh, make a covenant with many for one seven. That's a final seven year or one week, some scriptures say. Well, the he there is referring to uh, the prince of the people that came and destroyed the temple in 70 AD. So we, we know that whoever that is, the, the leader of a reborn Holy Roman Empire, and we'll look at some of those scriptures here in a little while, but whoever is coming from Europe, that's where the Antichrist is going to come from. He's going to be that person that is going to rise up out of ten kings and he is going to have a, a mouth that speaks great things. He's going to come on a platform of peace. He's going to do a lot of things that other people right now can match up with some of the things that we're beginning to see. But it doesn't mean they're the Antichrist. You know, we have a couple that we look at a lot and we say this person could be him or this person could be him. But it doesn't mean that we know because we don't. We're just saying, well, this is, he comes from the right region and he's saying some of the right things, but we won't know until that halfway point of that final seven years. He's going to stand on the temple mount. Yeah, absolutely. It's going to be a temple. Yeah. Red heifers have to be, there has to be a red heifer ceremony first. Yes. All right. Well, we'll look into all that and more on the other side of the break. Don't go anywhere. We have open lines. Give us a call at 877 end time 877 877-363-8463. A voice spoke to me and said, I've got something I want to show you. I was so sure God had talked to me. And I was stunned by what I saw. A direct fulfillment of this over 2,500 year old prophecy. The United States will stand with Israel. Why haven't I ever seen this before? One third of humanity Die. What do these beasts symbolize? The lion, the bear, the leopard. The combined beast from Revelation 13 represents the end time government of the Antichrist. Understanding the end time. Now streaming on End Time Plus and available to order at endtime.com slash UET. Go to endtime.com slash UET or call 800 end time. What if you could understand Bible prophecy? Dave Robbins, the host of the End Time Show's TV and radio programs, is holding a free prophecy conference near you. Gain peace and understanding about what the Bible says concerning End Time prophecy. Call 1-800-END-TIME or go to endtime.com slash events to see when Dave will be in a location near you. Welcome back to the End Time Show. Vince Stegall here with Doug Norvell. Open lines at 877 time 877-363-8463. Give us a call. We'd love to hear your perspective. Could Donald Trump be the Antichrist? Our answer is obviously no, not a chance. But with the Israel Heritage Foundation giving him the Crown of Jerusalem Award and suggesting he might be the Prince of Peace, folks are asking if he may be the Antichrist, and some are even suggesting he could be the Messiah of course, uh, I, m- I mentioned the Chick-fil-A thing earlier today, Doug. That sold some people, not us. Uh, the Bible's very clear. He's not the Messiah, nor is he the Antichrist. Uh, but before we get into that, maybe realistically, could Trump be the next president of the United States, Doug? That, that could be a question that we explore. Mm-hmm. Um, considering Biden's 2024 budget, that seems more and more likely that he will be. Uh, today, we're happy to have our friend Philip Patrick from Birch Gold joining us on the phone to sort out the Biden administration's pandemic spending. Philip, welcome back to the End Time Show. Thank you so much for having me, guys. It's a pleasure. Always a pleasure for us as well. 
after this posturing and hand waving in Washington, you know, it seems like Congress didn't really change the administration's 2024 budget. What's your take on that? Yeah, I mean, it's it's a pretty pretty accurate summary. Uh, just minutes before a midnight deadline, as of course we've become used to, uh, the Senate passed the second of two spending bills for 2024, which basically keeps the lights on through September. Now, total discretionary spending for the year is going to come to about $1.66 trillion. And it's important to understand this is only discretionary spending. This doesn't include Social Security, Medicare, debt service payments. Discretionary spending, we're talking about just 27 percent of total government spending. But the truly disturbing uh, part is, is what you said, right? And that is that the budget largely tracks with an agreement that the former Speaker of the House, Kevin McCarthy, worked out with the White House last year, which restricted spending for two years and suspended the debt ceiling into January 2025. And I have to say, this is just absurd, right? McCarthy was ousted exactly to prevent this kind of spending disaster from reoccurring again. And here we go, another $1.7 trillion in debt. It's a complete and utter surrender. Now, I understand this is an election year, but it's hard for me to sympathize with this short-term thinking. This level of spending, as we've discussed before on the show, it's simply unsustainable. We're digging the hole faster and deeper. And I think if Congress can't start making tough decisions, it's going to be too late to ever climb out at this point. Mm. Well, if Doug or I managed our households like they do, what do you think would happen to, to us with our finances? We, we'd be out on the street, right? Yeah, that, that's just the reality. We don't run our households this way. If we were corporations run like the government, we would be bankrupt, right? It's, you know, it's not feasible for us to just keep amassing debt you know, with, with no limits, keep spending borrowing money, uh, borrowed money. Sorry, We know that the debt collectors will come and the game will be up. Well, the U.S. government doesn't have that issue. We can create money out of thin air. The problem is it leads to inflation and devaluation unavoidably longer term. Wow. Well, what would have to happen to bring the government spending back in line? It's a, it's a really good question. Um, we could balance the budget, right? But balancing the budget, all that means is not going further into debt. Nobody's even talking about how we address this $34.6 trillion that the nation already owes. Now, to balance the budget from where we are today would be feasible in theory, right? But the practical uh, application is going to be much more difficult. To give you an example, Congress would now have to cut discretionary spending to zero, right? That means no funding for any government agencies, not defense, not agriculture, no FBI. That's going to balance the budget, right? Alternatively, we could raise income and corporate taxes by 50 percent. That would do the job, too. But the problem is these are essentially impossible. You don't get elected by promising your constituents you're going to raise taxes or, or take away handouts. So instead, what we get is this dog and pony show, lots of posturing, lots of hand waving, and ultimately another $1.7 trillion deficit. So, you know, to answer the question, it is feasible in theory, mm. but not in reality. And it's no wonder that the Federal Reserve are struggling as much as they are to keep inflation under control. Where are we right now with inflation, and, and where in the world are we headed? Look, it's not looking good. Uh, actually, CPI numbers came out today again, now up to 3.5% annualized. So CPI, is, which is the Consumer Price Index or the Fed's inflation metric, has now increased for the third month in a, in a row. What it is is a sign that inflation now has become entrenched meaning these prices are here and they're here to stay. And the Fed are in a very tough position right now. I think they're cautious of raising interest rates anymore. Every time they do, something in the economy breaks. So the plan, it seems at the moment, is just to keep interest rates where they are 
and hope that eventually prices will start to subside. Now, it's not a very good plan, but it appears to be the, the best that they have at the moment, especially considering these $1.7 trillion deficits, one after another, are just highly inflationary. It's almost like the federal government and the Federal Reserve are locked in an arm wrestle over the dollar's value. The Fed are trying to keep it higher with elevated interest rates, and the White House are trying to push the value down with massive massive deficit spending. Maybe the government are hoping to inflate the debt away. And if so, it's working, right? The dollar's purchasing power is down 17% since January of 21. So inflation is eating away at the national debt. The problem is, at the same time, it's eating away at our savings. And mm-hmm. this just isn't a situation in, in which anyone wins. There are ultimately only losers here. So Philip Patrick with Birch Gold is joining us. You can learn more about them, birchgold.com slash end time. Philip, does this explain why gold's price recently hit another record uh, over, uh, what, 23.50 per ounce? Look, I, I think so, right? You know, a plummeting value of, uh, of the dollar is always going to drive gold prices up. But what's so encouraging is that it's being driven by a number of different factors. So is dollar devaluation driving gold's price? The answer is absolutely yes, right? The dollar's down 17% since January of 2021. Gold is up almost the exact same amount over the exact same time period, and it's not a coincidence. So dollar devaluation certainly driving gold price, but there are other factors to consider as well. Demand, for example. Central bank gold buying has shattered records 2022, 2023 were the two single biggest years ever in history for gold buying by central banks. And it's important to understand why. At the end of the day, central bankers are facing the same challenges that we are. Economic uncertainty, inflation and a loss of purchasing power. And they are diversifying their assets with a time-tested safe haven store of value. What applies to them, of course, applies to us. But I do want to say one thing to everyone out there. Yes, gold prices are moving. It's a reflection of what's happening in the economy. But I think we got a lot of scope for growth. We have to remember the real all-time high in gold was hit back in January of 1980. Gold at the time hit $850 an ounce. If we adjusted that for inflation, that would be the equivalent of around $3,300 today. So essentially, gold has, could grow another 30% from where it is today, and it would just be back at previous highs. And I think, that, you know, in terms of value, and I think the fundamentals for gold today are stronger than they were back in the 80s. So timing is good, and I think gold today is more important than it's ever been uh, and I encourage everyone out there to get information because, you know, this is about protecting our retirements and, and, and having a hedge in place. And as much as possible, you want to be preemptive with that. Well, because of the price per ounce, you know, people might say it's a bad time to buy gold. But from what you just described, it sounds like quite the opposite. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, absolutely. I haven't seen in my lifetime a better time to buy gold. It grew from the 70s to the 80s on the back of inflation, market downturns, which is the same climate we're in today. You factor in a world running away from the dollar, and I think it strengthens the need for gold today. Well, Philip, we appreciate you joining us. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us about Birch Gold. Thank you for having me, guys. God bless you, Philip. Visit birchgold.com slash end time. Get the free info kit on gold to protect you and your family saving from the uncertainties of today. All right, Doug. So, yes, Donald Trump could be the next president. Obviously, he's campaigning, and we're talking about him today specifically. And people are suggesting maybe he's the Antichrist. People are suggesting maybe he's the Messiah. We are saying, no, he's not the Messiah. No, he's not the Antichrist. And we're looking at all that. Um, and showing everyone, like we've done for decades here, Doug, we explain current events through the lens of Bible prophecy. So right. looking at what Bible prophecy says, we're taking your calls. The number to join us is 877-IN-TIME, 877-363-8463. Where do we go from here, Doug? Well, you know, you, you mentioned could he be the next president. Well, one of the things that article was saying, Vince, is among American Jewish 
people who normally vote Democrat, uh, they have switched and, and many of them now, I think it was 55% now are saying that they would vote for President Trump because of the things that he's done for Israel, the things that they see. And, and right now they're watching the current president and his administration do things that appear to be against Israel and things that can only hurt Israel. Uh, one of the things, you know, recently was uh, taking credit for trying to um, cause Netanyahu's government to collapse right in the middle of a war. It's known, you know, we, we had a, a story last week where um, it was in Breitbart that showed a four-step plan that Biden had to bring uh, Netanyahu down. Our vice president has said she would like to say adios to, to uh, Netanyahu, uh, not to the Israeli people, but to their leader right here in the midst of a war. They also put pressure on them to stop um, what was going on in Gaza when they felt as though they had Hamas on the run. They have had to pull some of their troops out of Gaza to focus on the north now because of the tensions that are happening there in Iran. But people are seeing these things. They're seeing what this administration is doing uh, to them. The, the lack of vetoing a vote that made the aggression in Gaza turn into a war crime now uh, in the eyes of the uh, UN Security Council. Uh, once again, we sustained from vetoing that and we let that go through. And so now uh, they're saying that they're creating genocide there in Gaza with these attacks. Uh, so the Jewish people are watching this. They're also seeing the anti-Semitism that's rising all over the world. It's not just in Israel, it's, it's all over the world, including this nation too. And when you have an administration that appears to, to be uh, not supporting Israel fully, not backing them up, then there's gonna be a lot of this where people are going to say, uh, you know, death to Israel. And now they're even saying death to America. You know, there's a big story in a video that went viral the other day in uh, Dearborn, Michigan, where Dave's gonna be there in a few weeks, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, Plymouth specifically. Yeah, and, and right there in Dearborn, they were having the, the big rally and they were chanting, Muslims there were chanting, death to Israel, death to America, in our own nation. Mm. So things are, things are heating up and people are starting to, to see, you know, what, what needs to be done, I think. Could Trump be the Antichrist? We're going to get to your calls after the break. 877 times the number to join us, 877-363-8463. We'll be right back. Understand what is taking place. We're in struck many. Except a man is born again. He can enter or see the kingdom of God. I don't care what label you've been given or what label you've given yourself. You are essential. You still matter. This is a journey, and when we get to the other side of that, that's where our prize is. That's where our reward is. Time is not going anywhere. Welcome back to the End Time Show. Vince Stegall here with Doug Norvell. Open lines at 877 end time 877 We're going to start in Wisconsin. Kelly is watching there. Kelly, welcome to the End Time Show. Hi, thanks for having me. Hi, Kelly. Absolutely. Thank you for coming on. I was just listening a little bit and I was wanting to call in because we see in Daniel chapter 8 that the Antichrist comes out of the, there's like an interaction between the ram and the goat, I think it is, right? Mm -hmm. That's right. And then the Antichrist has to come out of Gre what would have been Greece under Alexander the Great. Do I have that correct? Uh, 
Yes. Well, what what happened was, and I mean, you're right what you're saying there, but what happened was the the uh, places that Alexander the Great conquered, they were all spread out between his four generals, and so yeah. each of them got different parts of that empire, and so it. Yes, in that general region somewhere is where he's going to come from. Can we say specifically that he'll come from Greece? I don't think we can, but you're okay. you're on the right track. You're you are doing well. So then I was going to make a separate comment, mm -hmm. um, slightly separate, that the latter part of Daniel eight talks about the Antichrist coming out or being out of the. Um, Without warning, he shall destroy many, and he, he shall even rise up against the prince of princes. He shall be broken, but by no human hand, which takes us back to the, I think it's Daniel 2, where the stone comes cut with no human hand and crushes the iron and clay. Um, is that right? And Kelly's impressive. You're, you're impressive. I like Where'd you learn all this, Kelly? Just the Bible. Just the Bible. Um, just, Bible just the Bible. And then some just commentary. the source. <laughs> um, okay. I actually independently started looking at Re Revelation, Daniel, Ezekiel, all the like prophecy mentions in the Bible, yeah. and came up with an understanding that's extremely similar to what you guys talk about. Mm -hmm. And that's how I find you, found you guys eventually somehow stumbled across it. But I had been looking at everything going, there's multiple timelines here, but they overlap in different places. Yeah. And started really looking into what that looks like, and that's how I found you. But one more thing. Okay. Um, so the, I think that the iron and clay, and I actually think I heard you guys mention this before too, possibly, is Roman Catholic Church being a mixture between Rome and, you know, we, we hold this in jars of clay. Right. Um, like Christian, Christianity. Um, and so I wanted to just say that I do wonder if the next pope, or pope probably near future, could be Bechara Botros al Rahai, I think is how you say it, from Lebanon. He is a cardinal who I, I just was looking him up because I'm thinking, like, if it is from that area... Um, close to the beautiful land or whatever it says um, in Daniel 8, mm -hmm. um, from, you know, taking over portions from the east and coming up from the south and whatever. I'm just wondering if that might be a name to float out because he has a lot of um, interfaith initiatives that he is doing. Okay, so let me ask you this. When you're looking at that, and so you're right, the, the legs uh, of iron symbolize the Roman Empire, but then it comes into that clay element, which symbolizes in the feet the iron mingled with clay. That's the Holy Roman Empire. And, yeah. and so that's the ten toes are representing the same thing as the ten horns. You're doing great. That, that's great understanding. But are you are you thinking that whoever that the next pope could be could be the Antichrist, or let me just ask you like that? So that okay, okay. Yeah, maybe. So so here's I was what. Just gonna float that. Well, that's that's good. You're on the right track. But here's the thing. So there's going to be two actually leaders mm -hmm. of the Holy Roman Empire because there always has been. There's been a political oh, the leader, and there's been a religious leader. Whoever held the office of the pope. Okay. Well, the Bible right. tells us the same thing. Because if you look in Revelation 13, you see the first beast is talking about that one world empire and its leader, the Antichrist, okay? Because it goes, it talks about the actual body of it when it talks about the seven heads, the ten horns, the body of the leopard, the mouth of the bear, I mean the mouth of the lion, the feet of the bear. So that's the world government that's come together. All the beasts that Daniel saw in Daniel 7 have now come together in that one world beast. But then later in the chapter, it talks about the, this leader, the, the Antichrist himself, who has this mouth that boasts these things and he makes war against the saints. So that beast that it's talking about represents both the kingdom and the king, the leader over that. But then in, later on in Revelation 13, you see a second beast. And this second beast looks like a lamb, but it speaks like the dragon. Okay, speaks like the devil. Well, the lamb, we know, is 
When you think of a lamb in the Bible, you think of the Lamb of God. You think of Jesus Christ. And the, the, whoever holds the office of Pope, he is the vicar of Christ, right? He's a lamb figure. And so he is going to have a political partner or a spiritual partner, I mean, that political leader, and that will be the false prophet. So you're right. We believe that whoever holds the office of the pope at the time the Antichrist is revealed, that pope will be the false prophet. And that's why we're seeing the things come out of the Catholic Church right now that we're beginning to see how, you know, they're, they're turning, leaning more toward the homosexuality. Uh, they've said for a long time that even agnostic people can enter into heaven, that Muslims worship the same God. We do all these different things. They've been leaning toward making this an all-inclusive type of Christianity, and that's the type of Christianity they're going to want. Anybody that holds to what Jesus said, Anybody that uses the name of Jesus in the end time, we're going to be the outlaws. We're going to be the criminals, and they're going to be pushing this false religious system onto the world. That makes more sense. And actually, my husband corrects me on that all the time. I'm like, you know, confusing the mouthpiece versus actual Antichrist. Thank Kelly, you. are you already on End Time Plus? No, I'm not. Well, stay on hold if you don't mind. We're going to gift you in sure. Time Plus. You'll have access to everything that we've pretty much ever done, including understanding the end time where Dave walks us through 14 episodes of the, you know our foundational teaching on Bible prophecy. Of course, Revelation's on there as well, 21 episodes where Irvin goes chapter by chapter explaining uh, the book of Revelation. I think you'll really enjoy it, so we'd like to gift it to you. So please stay on hold. We'll get your email and set that up. Uh, right away. Great Thank you call, so much. Kelly. Great Thank call. You. you know, aside from her being from Wisconsin, now Kelly, I'm a Vikings fan. My dad <laughs> raised me to be a Vikings fan. And I see you're from Wisconsin, and you sound like you're from Wisconsin, so I imagine you probably hate the Vikings. Yeah, she's probably a Packers she's fan. She's already on hold. All right. Well, yeah. Dave likes the Packers, nonetheless. <laughs> yeah, <he does. laughs> um, all right, let's go to uh, Texas. Julie, I believe this is my friend Julie, um, that we oh, actually. Yes. Julie, Hello, are you, you on? Yeah, can you hear me? Is this the Julie from Texas? Yes. So good to uh, talk to you. I know. My husband and I got um, to meet you and Dave um, when you spoke the other evening at church. And um, unfortunately, Doug wasn't there, but maybe one He heard one I was time. preaching and said, I can't come. He did. I, I was watching out. it online. I no, I said Doug heard I was preaching and didn't come. <laughs> oh, Okay. <laughs> Well, you know, uh, I wanted to call. This is a little bit of a different um, question. It's not about the Antichrist, but um, my question is, is with the Red Hat for Sacrifices and the building of the Third Temple, um, I just kind of was hoping maybe to have a little bit of clarity on um, the Jewish people. They don't believe in Jesus. Right. For, I mean, most of them, as we do as Christians, Um but the way I'm reading and understanding is that they are eager and anxious to build the third temple because it will usher in the Messiah. Um, with them not believing in our Jesus as, as the Messiah, what Messiah are they thinking by building the temple is what Messiah is going to be ushered in? Right. So th this is setting them up to be fooled by that um, Antichrist when he stands in that temple. Because, I mean, the whole thing, you think about it from a Jewish perspective, okay? So one thing, we, you're talking about the red heifers, and they, they believe that they need these red heifers for the purification ceremony so that they can even go up there and begin to build the temple, okay? So that's where the red heifers come into it. Uh, and, and then for them to do this temple... We know that three and a half years into that final seven years, that Antichrist is going to stand in that rebuilt temple. Now, we know at that point the temple's rebuilt because when you look in Revelation 11, 1 and 2, John was told to measure not only the temple but the altar, the worshipers, but not to uh, measure the outer court that it would be trodden down by the Gentiles. So we see that sharing of the, of the temple mount. We see that they're going to be able to have this... Uh, temple, and then when they begin these animal sacrifices, we believe that there's going to be an outcry from all the PETA uh, 
people, you know, everybody that for right. animal rights and things like that. I mean, there's already been some uproars about this red heifer ceremony. And so the Antichrist will step into the scene and think about this. What it says about the false prophet, one of the things he does, he's able to do miracles in the sight of men. And one of the miracles he does is he pulls fire down from heaven. Okay, so imagine, and I'm just kind of giving you a scenario. I don't know if this is going to happen. I'm just saying it could. The, the Jewish people are looking for Elijah to come before the Messiah because it says that in Scripture. Jesus said okay. that was John the Baptist, that he fulfilled that. So they're looking for Elijah. One of the things Elijah did was he pulled fire down from the sky. That's one of the things this false prophet does. And if he does that and then points to this guy and that's the political leader and says, here's your Messiah, the Jews could buy into that because oh, okay. of that very thing. But And, and Julie, okay. the, the Jews are still looking for uh, their Messiah, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Yeah. So they don't okay. look at Jesus as that. So they're still looking for him to come and establish his kingdom here, and um, the Jewish people would rule the world. Yeah. So they're still looking for that. They're looking for that. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, that helped me. That helped me a lot. Very Thank good. you. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Julie. Thank you. Good to hear from you. <laughs> God bless you. All right. I appreciate Julie so much. Uh, we're going to go to Missouri now. Mark is watching there. Mark, we are very close to the end, so uh, don't want to rush you, but I also don't want to have to cut you off later. So, Well, I, I end up being the thought of the day on most of the shows that I actually get in. But uh, anyway, I think I'm looking at this uh, Shah of Iran's son, um, and you know, it kind of goes with what the gal before was talking about, you know, this Muslim uh Pope or whatever she was kind of referring to, um, you know, that might make a good connection there, you know, between the Antichrist and the and this Pope, which we know is a false prophet, you know. And, you know, you also got to look at it, too, that there's two sides, because if you look at it from the Trump side, as far as, you know, the peace treaty, Abraham Accords and all of that, everything is happening exactly opposite of what it says God tells them not to do, divide his land. So you kind of got to look at it that way, too, because everybody that's on that side, you know, that are Trump fans because he's doing this are doing exactly what they have to do, according to Scripture. Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, you're, you're right. And we're moving in a direction where we're hearing more and more people that are stepping up that seem like they want to take these roles on that we talk about a lot. But Trump is not one of them. Not today. No All right. Ever. Trump is not the Antichrist. No, Trump not. is not the Messiah. No, sir. All right. Pretty clear. And after Doug's interaction with those calls today, now you know why I call him the guru. If you agree with me, put guru in the oh comments. Let everybody know uh, how good Doug is. He's so great. And, okay, uh, grasshopper. I, uh, I'm thankful to, to work alongside Doug Norvell. So put guru mm -hmm. in the comments. Let him know how much you appreciate him. All right. We'll be right back here tomorrow at 3 p.m. Central Time. Don't forget to go to watch.endtime.com endtime.com. There's thousands of hours of content there, totally free because of incredible partners like you that give every single month at endtime.com slash give. If you'd like to partner with us every month or give one time, um, let the Spirit of the Lord speak to you and whatever He says to give, do that at endtime.com slash give. We'll see you back here tomorrow.